Good evening. This is Sean Christie, Political Prisoner News, and I'm Sean's dad, Craig Christie. Well, we're at the eve of the federal trial, which will start tomorrow morning uh, at the Scranton Federal Building at 9 a.m. Um, that jury selection will begin. As soon as the jury is selected, well, then guess what? Then the party begins. Opening statements will start and the trial will be on. There will be approximately 28 witnesses against Sean. Um, mostly law enforcement from um, pretty much everywhere except uh, um, Kentucky. But they do have a person coming from Kentucky who was quite famous and is a witness and was last on a witness list and his name is Dakota Myers. And uh, most interesting person who I guess him and Sean have not gotten along the past few years. And uh, it's interesting to see Sean sitting there on trial and Dakota Myers as a witness. Yet Dakota Myers made innuendos and threats against Sean the whole time. He was on the run and uh, well, I guess nothing happens to certain people in this country. Once again, we all know that. Um, the real sad thing was with Dakota Meyer, we just posted the little uh, little ploy they did about bringing up a group. A uh, little guy they had come in there, Sean Bensley, who uh, has connections right down to Kentucky. And, uh, yeah, it looks like they were just sending somebody in uh, to try to get some information out of Sean, hopefully for Dakota's testimony. Um, looks like Mr. Bensley was working with, uh, his cousin Sherry Jones and Adele E. Jones, who's a police officer in Cannyville, Kentucky, uh, who most certainly works for DM Tactical. That's Dakota's, um, security company that he has, his mercenary security company. Um, out of, uh, uh, I want to say Columbus, but I think it's uh, Greenville or something, um, Kentucky. Anyway, um, we kind of short-circuited that. So we know this clandestine group was just a bunch of individuals from DM Tactical Dakota's business because he's in town tonight, from what I know. So um, pretty much enough on that. As I said, I advised everybody, if there is DM tactical security people at the federal building tomorrow uh, working undercover, they're going to be trying to get in fights with uh, Sean Christie, political prisoner news supporters. Don't fall for it. Anything happens, something happens weird, some strange people out there, please report it to the U.S. Marshals. Uh, they've been alerted. I've talked with them, uh, and the FBI is very aware of it and looking into it. So... Uh, and just let law enforcement handle it. That's the best thing to do. Um, I don't know really what I was really going to come on and say. It's been a been a long ride. And uh, Sean did real good in Schuylkill County with the uh, McAdoo Mayor Stephen Holly charges. He, uh, well, he beat, I believe he beat six out of seven and ended up with uh, a misdemeanor two, uh, assault menacing non-contact. And a non-traffic um, ticket, which was for harassment. Um, and that was using an altered video that the judge allowed. Um, and it was also because the um, defense, or I'm sorry, the prosecutor and Officer Lahowski, the McAdoo officer who lied, uh, who altered the videotape, lied on a police report, lied in an incident report, Forgot that the man in the video, and we can all watch it on uh, Sean Christie Political Prisoner News. When you watch that video and the announcements, you will see a man standing there the whole time. Well, we got the mystery man, and thank you for some whistleblowers. Uh, his name's George Oakham III, and he never made the uh, police report. So that's very interesting, and uh, apparently he was... Uh, he is the boyfriend of the former road department manager, whose name I can't remember at this time. And, um, of course, we know that there are 
um, allegations of uh, McAdoo Patrolman Frederick Lahowski uh, being also gay. So, um, not being a homophobic, you know, I have my opinions about that. Uh, my opinions are in line with the Bible, but this is America. As long as you're doing what you want and you're not trying to hurt anybody, uh, you know, you're not trying to hurt anybody or take, or take their liberty away or take their property away. Well, then you know what? You can do what you want, but I feel there's a higher authority. Uh, might be something connected with that, and uh, that's a deep subject for another video. Uh, but just like to let you know, George Oakham III was the person who watched McAdoo Mayor uh, Stephen Holly. Uh, um, assault uh, Sean Christie for two minutes nine seconds and actually helped hold him down when an off or when Mayor uh, McAdoo was saying he was acting as a police officer and the courts found that he couldn't he wasn't allowed you know the interesting thing is still walking around uh, patrolman Mac McAdoo patrolman Frederick Lahowski he's still working duty here wow uh, State Trooper Andrew Watkins, who who lied on the uh, the uh, search warrant, saying he got a pen register out of Northampton. Well, guess what? Talked to the courts there. He never got one. So he lied in order to try to get a search warrant here. Uh, Joe Sicurda, the former uh, detective with Schuylkill County District Attorney's Office, and Michael Opaque, the District Attorney from Schuylkill County, who used to be Sean's public defender. So they all lied. Leo Sicurda is going to be a witness tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. He works for the AG's office now. I guess you get promotions and can move up the uh, law enforcement ladder when you do dirty deeds real well. Um, that's interesting in itself. Uh, you know, Watkins, Trooper Watkins still walking the street, still walking for working as a sworn deputy also for... Uh, Nick Hanavig, operations manager, who also for the search warrant, the county search warrant that everybody came in on. And uh, he's still walking the streets. He's going to be a witness tomorrow. And uh, the great thing was that two court of, uh, um, court of Common Pleas judges here in Schuylkill County said the DA Michael Peck, because he was Sean's former public defender, could never be involved in any repeat any legal proceedings involving Sean Christie and his office couldn't. So once again, we're going to see multiple witnesses tomorrow on the stand that should be in jail, uh, but they're not. Um, I think that kind of shows where we're at right now. Um, I just want to get to the main point. I don't want to talk everybody's ear off tonight. Uh, Big night, big eve of everything. I just, I just want to first thank the team here. Um, team Sean Christie, which is uh, my wife, Karen Christie. Um, Celia Harrison from uh, Frozen Justice. She is um, runs that blog. She's um, a great journalist and also a great investigative reporter. And Jessica Hoon Eckhart, who is also... Um, an investigative reporter here with with our news team and um also her and sean have some likings for each other um which is more than fine with with this family and of course myself i'd like to thank this team because this team is unbelievable we were working this friday night on uh researching sean beasley and really putting the connection to him from him to uh, Dakota Myers. I just hope that the U.S. Marshals and FBI did, or maybe they're just going to turn their heads about it. We'll see. Um, like the, they're they're like family to me, and they're like family to Sean. Um, also, like to thank all these supporters out there. You know, it's pretty good to have thirty four hundred supporters. I look at some of these other groups out there, and um, you know, they could really they're doing some good work, but. Boy, they need support, and um, just a couple of them I want to throw out to you, I think, that are really good groups to support. One would be that's really helped us out, 
would be uh, American Political Prisoner, and that's with Rudy and um, Aaron. Um, thank you guys. Um, you've done so much for Sean. Uh, you've done live YouTubes. You've put up with him. Uh, calls from prison. Uh, funny, Fox News can't get an interview with him, but you guys have had a lot of them. And uh, uh, American Political Prisoner just has so many political prisoners. Please go there. Research. See what's going on in this country. You can't believe how many people are in prison for trying to fight for their rights and trying to keep America what America was supposed to be. So there's a lot of folks out there um, that are in trouble, too. Um, and they're not criminals. They're political prisoners, much like Sean. Um, with Mitchell Frost. Mitchell Frost has been down the road. Um, he knows. And trying to keep America what America was supposed to be. So there's a lot of folks out there um, that are in trouble, too. Um, and they're not criminals. They're political prisoners, much like Sean. Um, Irv with Mitchell Frost. Mitchell Frost has been down the road. Um, he knows what this is like. I love you, brother. Uh, thank you so much for all you've done for us and your love for Sean. Um, also, uh, um, um, Inmate Justice is another site that supports us. Um, and one day, I hope we can all come together um, and we can bring this all together. And we need to bring together you know, everybody. We need to bring together also a lot of Native American community, um, a lot of things going on for the water protectors and stuff like that. You know, we're all in this together. And I always have an old, you know, they went after the Indians first. Now they're after the Cowboys. Pretty soon, there's going to be no America. So please check out the uh, groups I just, I just, um, I just listed. Uh, real good folks, real good people. Um, support some a lot of people who've been in our position and there's more and more groups every day that we're finding and talking to and uh hopefully we can build a big coalition one day and really be heard um and i guess the last thing i want to touch on and uh <clears throat> oh and thank you 3400 members of sean christie political prisoner news thanks for sticking with us um we'd have a lot more members uh facebook took 500 from us and said, uh, well, they're just not active enough. Well, that's interesting. I bet they didn't do that with Fox News or MSNBC or uh, you get the picture. Uh, last thing, um, and this is something real touching tonight. I guess on this eve, um, a little hard to talk about, but uh, two notes were written by Sean. Apparently, when he went to his uncle's, um, he wrote and left a note. And at this point, it's in evidence. There's not much we can rule. But he said, um, he wrote a note to his uncle. Hey, I have to do this. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. But I have some bad people after me. And a Marshall Payne lied. That's our head marshal here in the Middle District. And that um, he said in a note, I want to have some firepower. I have some real bad people after me. And he said, if the Lord says it's my time, then... It's my time to go. And he said, I'll pay you back one day. Putting that out there for one reason. A lot of people say, why are you even saying that? Well, it's in evidence already. You know, um, I have to thank Eamon Bundy for, I watched, um, I don't even know him. I'm, you know, not friends with him on Facebook. I wish I was. I have to send him a friend request. Um, he had a real good message today. They went out to help uh, a rancher out in Idaho. Um, they were saying it was illegal. Eamon Bundy and the three percenters got out there and found out that the people just weren't paying their bills. 
um, but he did a, a really good Facebook, and he talked about what a criminal was, according to our forefathers. A criminal is somebody who either wants to take your life, who wants to turn around and take your freedom, who wants to take your property. That is what a criminal is. And, you know, he, he was given different examples. And at the end of it, he said something that I really thought was what we're trying to say, but, but Eamon Bundy said it a lot better. He said, the only time there's an exception for when somebody's really not a criminal is when they're in fear of their life. When uh, they're in fear from, of their life, especially from the government, who at the time is acting as the criminal. And, well, at that point, anything that's criminal, because what he said in that note to his uncle, he said, you know what? I got some big, very big, very bad people after me. And he sure did because he's got a United States government that's trying to cover themselves because they don't want to prosecute people that need to be prosecuted because some of those people would be their own. And nowadays, we can't have that because the line tells us all cops are good. So, um, and it's a shame because for all the good cops out there, it puts more pressure on them because it's harder for them to turn into bad cops. But I thought that was pretty much what we can say about sh What are you going to do at that point? But you know why? He was scared for his life. And in an interview with Andy Mahalchuk from WBRE, um, here our local MSNBC affiliate, Andy asked him why he did it when, when state... Pennsylvania State Police were taking him out of a Carbon County Court. Sean said, I was in fear of my life from the U.S. Marshals and law enforcement. Can't blame him there for after everything that happened. So he was in fear and he was scared and he admits it. And the last note I really want to touch on would be the note he left for my wife and I. And um, I hope I can get through this because uh, I hope you're never in this position. But um, it was just, I love you, mom and dad. And he said, they're lying. I was never, the only time I was ever near the house was I was at the neighbor's once for charging my phone. But everything I did on the phone, all the threats and everything. He said, I did from the strip mines. I was never even around, they lied. Now we know they lied because there is no pen register and the whole thing was a farce. And the reason they raided the house so hard and came in like maniacs and smashed the house up and, and, and killed cats and injured cats was for one reason. They were trying to flush Sean out of woods. We were what's called collateral damage. So, of course, these maniacs are still act acting like this is a military operation in the Middle East. But you know what? I pray you're never in this position. I pray it's been the worst time ever. And uh, all I could say is he ended it with he said, I went to Canada. He went up to the Mohawk Reservation. My dad told us when we were 80, when he was 80 years old, that we were, we were Mohawks and that my Aunt Betty had all the paperwork and all that and official. He went up to the Mohawk territory, went around there, and so the spirits talked to him. He talked to the spirits and they talked back. And, uh, he said, I just hope one day um, we can all be together again as a family. 
So uh, I'm going to leave it here. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow. Day starts in court tomorrow. God bless. <laughs> she's I said she's going Facebook Live over here too. So. Okay. Ready to go? I'm ready. <laughs> well, the jury selection process is interesting. I've never really realized how in depth it was, and I've learned a lot today. What I thought was the most interesting part was the questions that they were going through today with just the initial phase one. Um, do you, or I'm sorry, have you heard about this case in the news? And some of the answers that the people gave um, were quite interesting, but they were also quite disturbing at the same time. Um, some of the people, um, find it in my notes, but it'll take me forever. Um, some of the people already found him guilty by what they heard in the news. And I can tell you from personal experience doing interviews just like this, by the time this gets to air, we have 30 seconds of our side of the story out there. And the rest of it is the anti Sean story, um, where they're saying, okay, well, he did this, he did this, he did this. But nobody says why he did this. And nobody says, you know, anything about the corruption that was involved in bringing us to where we are today. Um, for example, he just had the case in Spookle County, the, the Holly case, and the news coverage on that was like built. I mean, there were a few stories out there, but none of them said, hey, look, you know, out of eight or nine charges, one was dropped, one was dismissed. It didn't even apply. Holly had nothing to do with being a police officer. Um, so that charge was thrown out. He got all the other aggravated assault cases or uh, charges were dropped. He was only found guilty of one simple assault misdemeanor um, case. So none of that is being reported. None of the good things that Sean is doing are being reported. He's representing himself pro se in all these cases, including this case today, which is unheard of. And he's doing well. Yeah, he's had some issues. He's gotten upset. It's understandable. Something we noticed this morning was the prosecutors were sitting at their table and it looked as if they were scrolling through our Sean Christie political prisoner news Facebook page and looking to see if any of these potential jurors were members of our group page, okay? Which is fine, it's a public group. I don't have a problem with them doing that, but Sean does not have the same courtesy to be able to vet these jurors the way the prosecution is vetting these things. Um, we spoke to his standby attorney. I'm sorry, I'm long with it. <laughs> I, have to, I have to ask you. You know, you did get massive media coverage, it was big, big national attention. Are you confident that this seems like a pretty big of a challenge, a mountain to climb to be found innocent of these charges? I mean, are you optimistic it can be? I mean, it just seems like almost, almost impossible. Well, yeah, it does seem like it's almost impossible. that when the jury sits there that they do really hoping that Sean gets to present his case as well as the prosecution. I hope that Sean presents his case, gets to represent his case as well as the prosecution gets to represent theirs. With his mom, some would say, of course, mom's going to protect his son. Are you confident that he's, he's, are you confident he could be acquitted? How's he holding up? I should say, how's he holding up? He seems like he's holding up pretty well. Um, all things considered, he's got the world on his shoulders right now, and I think he's doing pretty well. Good question, I have to get it out. Some are probably asking, he did a lot of people were concerned. Is that why he's asking the question? Did you fear me personally, or did you feel threatened by me? But because uh, there are a lot of people over that three months said, they were afraid that he was in the back garden in the house or whatever. Right, but also at, over those that over that three month period of time, there were also a lot of people who were leaving their garage doors open for him. They were leaving food out for him. They were leaving signs out saying, hey, there's food here in the cooler. I mean, places we went, people would, you know, we went to the hometown farmer's market.
market and this woman's like oh my god sean christie i live in barnesville i i would leave food out for him i made sure i filled a gas grill up with, so he can cook out i mean so there was those people as well you know um yeah of course you're gonna get the people that are in fear for their life like when eric Cray was on the run i mean my one neighbor was bent out of shape because the street light went out behind her house because oh my god eric Cray's on the run well first of all he's not gonna come back at all I think there were, there's probably maybe about a small handful of people right now um, that would be decent jurors. Um, I'm good at reading people and their reactions, and I saw some of the jurors when they came back in um, when they were dismissing the first 11 that were cut, and some of the people were in there, like this one woman was like, oh my god, I, I can't believe I was impacted, I, 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 you know, or dismissed, and it was like... Those people are going to be weeded out in phase two. So you're, uh, you think there'll, have, be, there'll be enough here to have a trial with this jury pool? There's like 120 people. Well, they, you, they, 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 there's enough? they still have the 40 downstairs for the afternoon if, if need be. So, I mean, I, I don't know that a jury would be picked by today. I would be very surprised. Continuing on. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sean Christie, Political Prisoner News, reporting what most news agencies will not report. Um, a little bit further on into uh, Andy's interview here, not taking away from Andy by all means. Um, but like I said earlier, what did concern me the most was the answers from the potential jurors regarding um, the news stories and people who had it in their mind that he was already guilty because of what they heard in the news. And my biggest pet peeve, and it's been since 2008, 2009, is some of the stories that are out there in the news um, have been misconstrued, had been um, put out there incorrectly. And what happens is one person takes a story, they, another person picks it up, they add something onto it, and it never gets corrected. Um, and I'm looking for my notes here, which are chicken scratch, by the way. Um, I'm looking for one woman um, in particular that I wanted to talk about. Um, and it's concerning the news, and I'm sure I'll find it later. But what cued me off on that was she said that she had heard, I'm sorry, I should have had this done sooner, but there were so many, there were 60 people here. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to go off the cuff here. But anyway, um, one of the things that she heard was that he was accused of threatening Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin, whatever you want to call her. That is not true. He was never charged with that. That is a lie from the beginning that has never, ever, 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 ever been corrected in the news. He was charged with harassing telephone calls, letting a phone ring continuously to her attorney, John Tameson, who, by the way, was setting Sean up because we also have those tape recordings. He knew it was Sean calling and he was recording those phone calls before they even started, but that's another story. Um, we can do that in the future. But that's just a prime example of the stuff that's out there in the news that is being reported incorrectly. And stop laughing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying that anyway, too. There's lots of people here standing around, <laughs> and we will finish this conversation later. Definitely. <laughs> All right.
I am ready whenever you guys are. Look at that, all the lights are coming on. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> um, do you want to grab a two? Oh, sure, yeah. What? Uh, a two shot. So oh. it's on the two of us. The shot here. Fancy talk. <laughs> <laughs> also, you, know, you, like um, you ready? I'm good. concerning um, what the potential jurors saw in the news. So I thought that was interesting, and um, especially some of their questions that they had in regards to that. Very interesting. Now, opening statements set to start tomorrow. What are you expecting from the defense? Do you know anything? Can you say anything about what Sean is expecting to do on, on, his, on his defense? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Um, we haven't spoken on specifics of the case. Um, unfortunately, because when he calls home, they are recorded um, phone conversations. Being a pro se attorney, you do not get the same um, right. There we go. <laughs> you want to same start the right? sentence over? No, no, that's fine. Right. You, can, you can edit it, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have this all the time to us. Um, but yeah, being a pro se attorney, he is not he is not afforded all the same rights as if he was a lawyer of the association. So anything that he does, like I said, is on recording calls. So you know, of course, uh, the district attorney would be ahead of time to know what was you know, what he was finding in his case. Now, in terms of his decision to represent himself, can you speak on that at all? Um, sure. Yeah, there were um, quite a few. Reasons for that. One is um, the federal public defenders, um, Heidi Freese and Elliot Smith, um, promised a whole lot of things and did not deliver on anything. Um, in the very beginning, you know, gave us a game plan, said, look, this is what we want to do. And, you know, six months later, and it was like nothing was done. Um, that was one of the issues. Another issue was they were supposed to um, have his health issues looked into. That never happened, other than they tried to make him crazy um, and send him up to Manhattan for a psych eval, um, which of course came back, you know, that he is fit to stand trial. Um, and, you know, the issues in that department. And the third issue is the Federal Public Defender's Office never should have taken this case in the first place. It should have been sent out to a private attorney. Public Defender's Office um, in Williamsport, um, Tony Byrne, um, when they, when she defended um, Craig, my husband, and Sean um, a few years back regarding um, Sarah Cowan, he, Tony Byrne's uh, uh, father was appointed personally by Sarah Cowan as post-secondary education director in Alaska. Um, so there was a big time conflict of interest with that. She never disclosed that. But because of that, the Federal Public Defender's Office never should have taken his case and should have never been representing him for as long as they did. We heard about the, the witness list today from the from the government. Mm -hmm. Very extensive police officers from different states, state troopers, FBI, Secret Service. Sean not expected to call any witnesses. Do you think that that will work against him, work for him? Um, I'm not sure if he has a witness list. I don't know if that was, I mean, I know the list that was read today was just the prosecutor's witness list. I'm not sure if he, if Sean has submitted um, a list or not. Like I said, we don't talk about the specifics of the case, you know, for, you know, those reasons, but I'm not sure um, if he calls us, that would be great. I would love to be on the stand. A trial that's expected to take course over the next seven days. What are your expectations? How do you think? How do you think it's going to play? How are you hoping that it plays out? Well, of course, I'm hoping for the best. Um, it is an uphill battle. Um, he is, you know, fighting the giants. Um, he was in fear for his life when he was doing the things that he did, um, but trying to, you know, convey that to the jurors. I'm not sure how much leeway he's going to have in that regards. 
The jurors were asked if they thought that any of these alleged threats were covered under the First Amendment or anything like that. None of them raised their hands. Do you do you stand by what he did? Or do you, are you what's 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 kind of the family stance on this? Is that he never sent out these threats, or that they were? They well, were when it comes to a threat in legalese, a threat needs to be something that the person you are threatening is in fear of. You know, President Trump, I'm sure, probably never even heard about the threats. So there was no way he was in fear of those threats. John Morganelli, um, the district attorney in Northampton County, um, was quoted in Newsweek as saying, I didn't even hear about it until I heard it on the news. Uh, I was not contacted by the Secret Service. I was not contacted by the FBI. I wasn't contacted by anybody. He's like, you know what? Um, it really doesn't, you know, it really didn't face him. So that by legal definition, it's not a threat because he did not feel in fear for his life. You know, um, as for the questions, um, about the freedom of speech. I was a little bit concerned about that coming from the prosecutor, um, especially with his background um, teaching the Constitution. Um, I thought that was definitely a, a, a strange question because you could have argued with the jurors all day long, well, do you believe in the Constitution? Um, well, I don't want you as a juror coming from the standpoint of the VA, but yet the defendant would maybe yeah, want that person you know, so I thought that was, you know, like I said, we could have done that one back and forth as volleyball all day long. You know, I don't think that um, the Constitution should have been brought into this except for protecting, you know, people's rights. And that's, that's another thing with this case, you know, the government, the FBI, people service, they are here to protect everybody, but they have not been protecting Sean or her husband and myself in the last month. You know, so it's a two-way street. They're just not doing the second part of the street as far as I can see. And the search just being one of the targets also, I mean, the, the weapons traveling, bringing them over, over state lines, do, do those have any any standing, do you think, that they'll be facing any, any penalties for those? As far as the jury or I'm not quite sure. I guess um, when it comes down to this case, do you think that, that Sean should be walking away scot free or that there is something that, that he might have to take some responsibility for? Well, if anybody does anything wrong, yeah, they should have some sort of punishment for that. Um, I'm not saying that you know you go out and commit a crime, you know, you walk away scot free. Um, yeah, he should have some punishment for some of the things that he did. Um, as far as the guns are concerned, the only reason he is a felon in possession, the only reason he's a felon in the first place is for harassing telephone calls, letting a phone ring, cross state line. If that was in Pennsylvania from McAdoo to Scranton, it would have been a misdemeanor charge. But because it crossed state line, it's a felony. Okay, so that's number one, why he's a felon. Number two, um, there is a, a law or something, and uh, my husband's not here, he can tell you exactly what it is. I'm not into that um, knowledge in my head, but there is a thing where when you are a felon, you could um, put in to Washington, D.C. to have that felony taken off of the record so that you can get a in the future. However, our government has not done that office for many, many years, so any felons who are out there, like Sean, who has a felony because of a misdemeanor charge of letting a phone ring, you know, can't get his gun rights back. So that's an issue that needs to be addressed. So essentially, that. basically, your position is that these are a lot of trumped up charges. You're standing by. Oh. You're standing by yourself. 
Oh, heck yeah. Uh, heck yeah. I mean, he just went to Spokane County Court. He had seven or eight charges. Basically all the same charge. It's written a little different, but that's the way the cops do it is they truck charge everybody. You know, so they either, A, you take a deal, you know, so and they come in and say, oh, well, you know, we're, we'll drop this big one here and we'll just give you this little one. You know, or, you know, you have all these ones in the center in order just to get get a, a conviction one way or another, a complete conviction, whatever. So, yeah, the Trump charges are insane, you know. But that's not just only the Sean's case. That's what everybody else's case is out there. You look at any court record and you see, oh, my God, you know. I mean, I know someone now is first-degree murder, third-degree murder, second-degree murder. Come on, seriously, you can only kill somebody once. You know, how many charges do you have in the same... Thing. But that's the way our, our, our judicial system is working, unfortunately. Standing by Sean. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Well, not only do I stand by Sean, but I also pray for other political prisoners out there and prisoners in general. You know, that's something in the last, you know, 10 or so years we've been doing is, you know, fighting for prisoners' rights, you know, um, especially political prisoners. I mean, Leonard Peltier has been sitting in jail for 40-some years. The district attorney who prosecuted him turned around and said, no, that was, you know, we didn't have a case. You know, all these things turned around and defended the guy. They found him, you know, innocent, but yet he's still sitting in jail, you know, an innocent man. And, you know, he's a Native American. Um, that was another story. Um, but, yeah, here's, an, here's a, a Native American man, innocent, Still sitting in jail, you know. So that's what we do. We fight for prisoners, we fight for their rights. You know, because just because someone's in jail doesn't mean they lose their rights. I'm sorry, we can't treat them like animals. They don't treat people in prisons in other countries as bad as they treat prisoners in this country. And that's a little known fact a lot of people don't know. They just think that oh, yeah, yeah, you're in prison, you're getting three square meals, you're getting medical, you're getting dental, you're getting this. Yes, yeah, we hard doesn't work that way. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I get revved. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, My pet peeve. I think that's good unless there was anything right. else. No, nope, I'm good. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.